I am in beautiful Los Angeles, California, and I had the honor of doing a collaboration with none other than Donna from Psych IRL, and we talk about parasocial relationships and are they healthy or unhealthy. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So yeah, I had the opportunity, the pleasure of meeting the amazing, the wonderful Donna from the channel Psych IRL. And so you know, this is part of a collaboration. So I actually did a video over on her channel as well which will be linked down in the description and in the info card and at the end screen and she had me on her channel as we discussed topics like mental health on YouTube, emotional manipulation, profiting from mental health. We even discussed the little better help situation. So make sure that you go check out the channel that we did over on Donna's channel and make sure you subscribe to her because she makes some awesome content. But anyways, a lot of you know that I've been really diving into parasocial relationships, like the relationship between the YouTube audience as well as YouTubers. And I have a lot of questions and I want to understand like why we think the way we think, why we do the things that we do. You know, there's so many aspects of this and I read all of your comments and like it just fascinates me. So I thought it would be great to have a conversation with Donna and discuss this because she's into psychology and mental health as well. So without further ado, here is the conversation I had with Donna. What's up everybody, it's Chris from The Rewired Soul and I am joined by Donna. Donna, what's your channel and what's it about? Okay, I have a channel called Psych IRL and basically I make video essays of explaining internet culture using psychology. Yeah, so Donna, let me tell you this funny story and I don't even know if I told you the story when we first started talking, but I've been subscribed to your channel for a long time. Oh cool. All right, and I remember watching it and like it was like heavily psychology based and everything. And then you started doing stuff on like YouTube culture and social media culture. Yeah. I'm like, she's changed. I'm done with this channel. And and like when I made the pivot on my channel, yeah, I was like, oh wait, now I know what Donna's doing. So like you, like we were similar, but we're different. Like, right. What fascinates you about like the psychological aspect of like that culture? Um, we mean of that culture of um, like YouTube culture of like the topics that you choose. Yeah. You know, like you're not talking about politics, like you focus on a specific niche, like why? Like, does that intrigue you or? Um, yeah, so I went to school for marketing. So it's just always been an interest of mine. I mean, like some kids like to draw. I like to examine YouTube culture. Huh. Um, but as far as change, I've always wanted to speak about psychology and share that with the internet. Um, and I just couldn't find, I, I couldn't find like a effective way to do so that people were interested in. So I tried to be the ASAP science of psychology with doing that whiteboard stuff. Didn't work out. So oh, I, yeah, switched, I, yeah, I yeah. switched to, uh, examining internet culture. Gotcha. Yeah. No, that's, that's interesting. Like I, I, <laughs> I remember the old whiteboard ones, Yeah. but yeah, I wanted to bring Donna on the channel because those of you who saw, I did a video not long ago, I think it was like titled something about high dubs and Tana Mojo, but I'm fascinated with parasocial relationships, right? Like the relationship between you, the viewer and us, the YouTuber, YouTuber stands. And so Donna over on her channel, which you better go subscribe to, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, you did a video about like different YouTubers and their fans, like which YouTubers did you cover again? And like, what did you kind of discover as you did that? Oh God, I covered so many. Um, Shane Dawson for sure. Uh, who else? I have no sleeps. <laughs> I'm like, it's it's a struggle to remember. So Shane Dawson, Jax Films, Emma Chamberlain, Joanna Cedia, and then PewDiePie, and then a bunch of other. Did ones. you cover Logan Paul? Yes, Logan Sue. Paul. Yes, okay. yes. Was there anything like interesting or like, how did you do that research or is that something that you noticed? Um, so when I make videos about other YouTubers, um, a lot of their fans come onto my videos and they start commenting and I notice like they all have a certain personality type and they're usually very similar to the creator that makes the videos. So that again ties in with the parasocial relationship thing. When you make friends, you make friends with someone who is very similar to you. So that's what I've been noticing with the fans as well. So let me ask you this. Do you think that 
Like it's kind of seems like a dumb question, but I'm going somewhere with this. Do do you think people are drawn to YouTubers who are like them? Yeah. Now, how much do you think that has to do with something like confirmation bias? Confirmation bias, meaning like they're like they want like if you find a YouTuber who is similar to you, they're gonna have the same points of view as you and they're gonna agree with you on certain topics and oh, subjects. Yeah, yeah. So you think that weighs in? Oh yeah, for sure. Um yeah, so like I know you wanted to talk about Trisha Paytas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, when I say similarities, um, so Trisha has this very unique, extravagant lifestyle that mm -hmm. it seems like not a lot of people relate to. But when she does have the ability to be vulnerable, she talks about her insecurities, like her insecurities with uh, her relationship, her, her uh, diet. And I think that aspect is what people gravitate to. So they feel, I guess, similar to that. And it's not necessarily about her extravagant lifestyle. Mm. So something that I've always wondered, and one of the angles that I take on my channel, because like you take the psychology aspect and you're like, you try to find something relatable that people do uh, or watching already yeah. and then tie it in, yeah. right? So I'm doing that with mental health. And something that I'm always asking is, do you think that you... YouTubers are attracting fans who are trying to justify their behaviors in real life, right? So it's no secret, Trisha Paytas has had some stuff going on lately. Do you think people watch that because they look at their own life and they say, oh, well, they do it, so that excuses my behavior? Um, ooh, that's a hard one because I do think that... So you watch a clickbait video from Trisha Paytas. Mm -hmm. I do think half of it is, uh, oh, this person is interesting. I'm going to watch them. And those people usually leave. They say, oh, this is a crazy person. Yeah. It's like, just to be PC about it, I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think those people leave. But the people that stay, I do think that I agree with your point. Um, they find validation from her, you know, um, explaining her whatever her thought process problems and things like that yeah so with you examining you know youtube culture and everything like that like do you think that this is healthy or unhealthy like the way i look at mental health is right. just everything that we're thinking everything that we're doing it's either healthy or it's unhealthy do you think it's it's healthy to find youtubers that you relate to and model your behavior after them or it's if hard. they're i know <laughs> like i'm messing around girl yeah so like what do you think do you think that's healthy is it unhealthy like what do you okay how about this? Like, what do you do? Like, do, are you are you monitoring what you're watching and trying to be mindful of what you're doing in your own life? Yeah, because, okay, so your question kind of is not weird, but, like, in your scenario, the viewer is kind of helpless. So they're watching this video, and whatever the influencer is saying, they're automatically being manipulated by the influencer. And, like, for me, I think there has to be some sort of accountability for the viewer. The viewer has to t make their own decisions into, should I listen to everything this person says mm -hmm. or not? But I do see your point, though, because I know that a lot of younger viewers watch uh, influencers, and mm -hmm. they will validate their actions from whatever the influencer says. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's a hard one. So... Some like one of the studies that I found fascinating was Lindsay Lohan. I mentioned this the other day in one of my videos. Lindsay Lohan, when she was in her heyday, like messing up, getting DUIs and everything like that, there was this awful picture taken of Lindsay Lohan. Maybe I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see. But she was wearing like, I think it was an American apparel hoodie okay. or something like that. And she just looked like really haggard, DUI. It was a mess. Right. That week, that exact same hoodie got sold out across the country. Right. right. So when we're talking about younger audience and stuff, yeah. they're not connecting the fact that the picture you saw her wearing this in right. is related to a very bad situation. Yeah. But they still went out and bought that because they, yeah. they idolize that person. Yeah. So that's kind of where my question is of, is it healthy or is it unhealthy? Maybe it'll transition to this question. Do you think with that kind of power of influencers that you and me alike, as well as other YouTubers need to be more mindful of what we're putting out there, what we're showing. and right. Because I know there are YouTubers who, you know, I guess going back to Treasure Paytas, who like to be vulnerable, like to yeah. show all this stuff. Yeah. But do you think it's at the cost of maybe influencing people in the wrong way if they're mm -hmm. not getting help or working on themselves? Yeah. But, okay, so where do you think, so can people like, do you watch Jackass or have you watched Jackass? Oh, yeah, yeah. So what do you think, so should those those type of entertainers not do that anymore or 
what is the line? So here's here's a unpopular opinion. Okay. Like as a father, <laughs> as a father, I blame everything on the parents. Okay. Like literally, I yeah. do. Yeah. Right. But here's something that jackass. Because I've thought about this. Like, here's something that Jackass has over just about every other YouTuber. Yeah. Is that damn disclaimer that they put at the beginning of every yeah. episode. Yeah. No other YouTuber does that. Like, yeah. you don't have a YouTuber who's just being messy. And there's something that pops up and says, do not model yourself at all. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I guess that's, that's kind of my point of view yeah. on it. But also, I feel like, I think disclaimers are there for just legal, legal reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah, I honestly, I don't think they actually, I mean, I do think they mean not to copy them, but I also think it's there for legal reasons. I don't yeah. think like a kid says, oh, I'm not going to try this because they see the disclaimer. Yeah. They're not going to try it because it's stupid. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, okay. So the next question is, who do you think more responsibility should be on the YouTuber and what they're putting out there? or the viewer and how they're interpreting it and taking it in, yeah. or do you think it's like a 50-50? Percentage-wise, I don't know. Like, I, <laughs> I really don't know. If if the viewer is younger, it has to be on the responsibility of the parents to say, hey, this, is, this, is, this isn't a real friendship, or like, you can't do this because it's just entertainment. Mm -hmm. But for the YouTuber, uh, man, I, this is such a hard question for me because like, like my mindset is you can do almost whatever you want as long as it's within the terms of service it's mm. like it, it's it, it's i don't know it's entertaining but i don't again like i don't have any kids this isn't so maybe i'm seeing things from a different point of view yeah of it's like i get when things are clickbait i get when you're not supposed to do things like yeah so okay i don't know it's it's difficult for me to answer honestly. so okay so let's jump into this with the topic of jake paul Right? Mm -hmm. Like, you watched the Nerd City video, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Nerd City went into the legalities and stuff about, you know, TV, yeah. you can't do this. Yeah. And, you know, talked about how Jake Paul is doing that on yeah. that platform, and they can't separate this yeah. from that. Yeah. Right? So, when I look at that and how a child can't separate those things, like, one of the things that Nerd City touched on was the killer clown thing. Right? And then all these kids who really thought that happened. Yeah. Now... It's debatable because YouTube's kind of changing some terms of service things. Yeah. But, like, what are your thoughts on that? Because that's another aspect of this parasocial relationship yeah, where people true. are legitimately worried. Yeah. And, and even when you look at different relationships like Trisha and Jason, yeah. they're worried. And you see people taking sides and right. all of that. So in that aspect of it, does it kind of make you think about that? Um, meaning that they should not do that? or Yeah, yeah. Like, they should be a little bit more mindful of what they're putting out there yeah i mean i definitely think that all influencers should be mindful of whatever content they put out there um because then i also think what's the difference between that and a skit like i don't know like it's it's, it's such a difficult thing to yeah I now guess, you know what i'm asking you about all this stuff yeah. this is what's going on in my brain like i feel like i just can't tell logan paul to no you can't pretend like or jake paul yeah jake yeah paul, you can't tell you can't tell him to just say no you can't upload that type of content because there was then the mcjugger nuggets uh like his videos they were mm -hmm. all scripted and like it was him it was his dad like always destroying his xbox mm. but uh i don't know like would you tell him to not do that content or to put a disclaimer on it or like for me for me personally I would like if that was okay. a if that was my my style like that's what I would do, because YouTube ultimately started off as a platform where it was just people in their bedrooms yeah. talking right, yeah. and it's evolved into this thing where it's like high production, everything like that. But children especially think it's real, and something yeah. that we're seeing recently with the the David Dobrik situation yeah. is the line between you know a skit or a bit and yeah. reality is yeah. extremely blurred. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So like. I don't know, like we could talk for 15 hours about this, but yeah, like it's it's a weird, it's a weird thing because I, like something I mentioned in one of my other videos before coming out here is I'm trying to learn about how I can make my content better yeah. and how people get defensive and stuff, right? So what I've noticed in my comments is, oh, you know, it's just blown up because, you know, they're putting it on YouTube. This isn't real, but when I get YouTuber backlash, 
Like, why would you, why would you lash out if it was just a bit? Then that'd yeah. be like me just commenting on the Netflix show. Yeah. You see what I mean? So, how do you think that line, that line blurs, and how do you think that affects the viewer? So, going back to the Jake Paul killer clown scenario. Yeah. Nothing was said that this is fake, right? You and me know it's fake. Yeah. But your audience is mainly children. Yeah. Like. See, for the Jake Paul thing, I think that's where the parents have to come in. Like, you have to monitor whatever your kids are watching. I know it's impossible. Mm -hmm. But, like, for the Jake Paul and Killer Clown thing, that's when the parents have to step in and say, this isn't real. Like, yeah. are you just really letting your kids just watch that without any supervision? Yeah. You know? Yeah, like. Here's a good example. When I saw uh, <laughs> Avengers Infinity War, uh -huh. spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it for some reason, like, you've seen it, right? No, I haven't. Oh, Jesus. But you know, you, you you know the meme, I right? Know, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Like, when, <laughs> <laughs> when everybody's like disappearing at the end, I was yeah. there with my son, and he was like freaking out. I'm like, Dylan, all right? Like, chill, fake, yeah. not, you know, whatever. But yeah, yeah like, that's. That's the thing, and I don't know. I'm trying to influence more parents to watch and, you know, know this stuff. Like, I don't know. And that's a whole other video that I might make just about how to monitor your kids on YouTube. But right. one of the other things that I wanted to just dive into for the last part of this is you also talk about these types of parasocial relationships with the stalking, kind of. Yeah. People showing up at James Charles' yeah. house. Um, people showed up to the Team 10 house. And this even goes back into the parent, the, the parent aspect of it. Like, why, from your research, especially looking at those things, why do you think a person would think that it's okay to do that? I think these days, YouTubers are seen as celebrities. They feel like they're untouchable. They're, they're almost like gods. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, the, from a parent, I guess, I think the parents see them as that. And so they deserve it almost because the audience is who's making the money. I mean, from, from there, I don't think it's right, but I think yeah. that's what they're thinking. Yeah. And obviously the kids want to see their favorite influencers because, you know, they're, they're their friends. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Was there anybody, when you were growing up, was there anybody where you just really wanted to meet them? Uh -huh. This is really weird because I've always felt weird about this because like I, I've never had any idols or like anyone really? yeah yeah like everyone asks me that and like my default answer is always like oh my mom and dad i guess like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> like i've never really looked up to anyone like, yeah yeah i think I, and i think that's the healthiest way to kind of do this it's just everybody's just a, a person right right yeah. like I, I try to emphasize like i'm a guy who just picked up my camera and just started sharing my story and then you know just started doing some other things with it and, you know the just people like i just met donna today she's just a person yeah. you know an amazing person but but yeah it's like this larger than life type thing and like we hold them up on a pedestal and something i'm always looking at especially when we look at like modeling behaviors and all those things like is it like this bad thing where we think like oh this is a friend like the the stand thing yeah you know and you look yeah. back to the eminem song called stand yeah. like yeah. that kind of got that got kind of creepy oh, yeah, and yeah. Do you think there's anything that YouTubers can do to prevent it? Do you think do you think YouTubers, for a lack of better words, is leading people on with that personal relationship? Yeah. Um, I mean, personally, I've never felt like I've led anyone on. I mean, I know that some YouTubers say, oh, I love you. And I mean, we know <laughs> everyone knows they don't actually love you. But uh, how can a YouTuber like? Like I'm really about personable accountability yeah. and all that. So I like, it's hard for me to see a YouTuber leading a fan on really. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Like I can't, I can't fathom my head on how they would do that. But, yeah. I mean, do you disagree or? No, no, I no, no. When you said personal accountability, I'm like, no yeah. wonder why we get along. Yeah. Cause that's what I'm always telling people. I'm like, yeah. we need to check in with ourselves. Like, you know, even with my son, like yeah. I teach my audience in some more ways I teach my son. Like, I'm like, I don't care what that person is doing. This is about you. Right. You know, like you have to accept this responsibility. Yeah. Um, you know, even talking about like, like when we look at people like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, like yeah. it's important for the audience to understand these people who are making millions of dollars, they can get away with that, but you can't. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I don't know. Let me ask you one last question. One last question. Right. When you're making your content, like it's essay format and all that, like 
are you are you trying to like help people? Are you trying to get them to think? Like when I watch your videos, I'm going into it like, how is this gonna kind of open up my mind to some new things? Like yeah. what is your what is your intention when you're making a video? Honestly, um, it's just like I have a hypothesis on a certain topic. Um, I use internet culture to maybe highlight that topic, and I'm sharing that with the audience. I'm not. Am I trying to convince them? Not really. I'm. I'm literally. I'm just stating my opinion, and you can take that however you want. Mm -hmm. So if you disagree with me, feel free to do that. If you agree, feel free to do that as well. So, yeah. Like I. I don't feel like I'm being manipulative. Manipulative, but I don't know. Like maybe subconsciously, like with the clickbait. I think. Yeah. I mean, I think all YouTubers are kind of trying to be like manipulative of the algorithm, but like. Yeah. I mean, it's not on purpose. Yeah. Okay, one more question. <laughs> Do you ever have people in your comments get yeah. pissed because of your, your title or thumbnail? It, it's never been a major problem. But I mean, like, maybe a couple, but, like, yeah. not, not too bad. It's yeah. Too bad. That's something else I'm trying to figure out. Do people get pissed? Really? Yeah. Like, like something I, I'll notice is, like, I upload a video that's, like, 15 minutes long, uh -huh. and I get comments within three minutes, like, yeah. disagreeing with me. I'm like, wait, you didn't even... Like what? Like yeah, you didn't even yeah, watch it. Yeah. But anyways, I want all of you to think about your relationship with YouTubers, how it's affecting you. Anything that Donna and I talk about, like leave your comments down below. And so, you know, Donna's links are all going to be down below. Do you have any exciting stuff coming out that you could tell us about? Exciting. We're doing a video on your channel. <laughs> yep. That's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. So yeah, make sure you follow Donna and subscribe to her. And anything else cool going on? Not that I can, no, no. <laughs> that was Every a very anticlimactic <laughs> answer. Well, if you ask me, everything about Donna's cool. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Dang, that was a pretty sweet conversation, huh? And and yeah, like I wanna hear your thoughts, your views, your opinions down in the comments below. Like, do you think your relationship with YouTubers is healthy? Do you think it's unhealthy? Talk about, you know, some of the co uh, the topics that we discussed, like, you know, should YouTubers take more responsibility for their influence that they're putting out there? Because I know through the conversation that I had with Donna, like, as my channel grows, I have to start thinking more about what I put out there, what I say, because some people have a relationship with me where they take what I say, you know, really seriously and all of that. So I want to hear your thoughts and comments down below. But also, do not forget, I did a video over on Donna's channel, Psych IRL. Again, it's going to be linked all over the place. Info card, description, pinned comments, as well as in the end screen. So make sure you go over there and check it out because she asked me some really good questions about the state of, you know, YouTube as well as mental health, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification notification bell because I make a ton of videos and a huge huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on patreon you're all amazing and just as promised click right there I think it's right there there's a thumbnail which links to the video that I did over on Donna's channel make sure you go check it out all right thanks again thanks so much Donna and I'll see you next time